Typical words that describe what an engineer does is design and build. However, to design and build anything, an engineer needs to understand the process or rules. For example, a civil engineer does not simply wave a magic wand and a building is automatically built. Instead, a long and complex process is undertaken. This could include undertaking building requirements, creating building plans, obtaining building approvals, paying fees, selecting materials, and much, much more. Regardless of the type of engineer, learning to program develops your skills to take a specific task and break it down into basic building blocks. Let's look at a simple example. Many students enjoy using Facebook. And to check your Facebook account, it generally takes three processes. The first is to determine the device you're going to use and check Facebook with. Is it my desktop, laptop, tablet, phone, or some other hybrid device? The second process is turning on and logging into your device. This will be dependent on the device you choose in the first process. The final process is opening up the browser or app and logging in. Let's examine the process of how to log into your Facebook account from a computer. The sequence is that you go to the Facebook website, you then enter in your email ID and password, and then you click on the login button. If your ID and password are valid, you'll now be in your Facebook account. If not, you'll receive an error message and I'll have to try again. What we have created here is a very simple algorithm. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to solve a given problem. Programming is developing your skills in taking a process and breaking it up into many smaller ones. The algorithm we wrote for logging into Facebook is known as pseudocode. Pseudocode is very simply a plain English-like explanation of how something works. Generally speaking, you would use your lines of pseudocode as comments in your programming. Your program would then focus on implementing your comments. This brings us to an important point. When you are programming, you need to analyze the process from the point of view of a programmer and not as an engineer if you want your code to work. As a programmer, you need to think about inputting, storing, manipulating and outputting data. An easy way to visualize an analysis is via flowcharts. A flowchart is a visual tool that programmers use to map out an algorithm. It is important for all engineers to develop skills in building flowcharts. The flowcharts you will learn while programming will teach you the fundamentals on how to map out complex processes using every discipline of engineering. The symbols and procedures might change, but the idea remains the same. Different symbols are used to represent different components of the flowchart. There are five basic symbols. Terminal indicating the start or end of the program. Process, indicating an action that needs to be taken. Input output, used for getting input from a user or sending output to a user. Decisions, separate paths are taken dependent on the answer to a decision. A decision could be as simple as yes or no, or true or false. Arrow connectors are used to represent flow of control by connecting different components of your flowchart together. To begin with, we will look at a very basic example at solving a problem. Let's look at the way we can calculate potential energy. Potential energy is given by the formula mass times gravity times height. We know that gravity is 9.81 meters a second squared. Let's now start our algorithm using pseudocode. When programming, when using variables, it is good practice to initialize all of them by assigning a value. We will assign our variable answer the value 0 as we don't know what value that will be and we assign gravity with the value 9.81. This is a process. The next step is to enter in our values for the mass and height. This is input output process. We then need to multiply the values of mass, gravity and height together and store the result. This is a process. We then want to print the answer. This is input output. 
We will now go through and transfer our pseudocode into the flowchart format. This gives us a good visual representation of the process. Each line of our pseudocode is translated into the correct flowchart symbol. Input output processes are shown as parallelograms, processes are shown as rectangles, and a diamond is used for making a decision. Arrow connectors are used to show the flow from the start to the end of the algorithm. As a programmer, you now have a very clear understanding of the structure of the algorithm and the tasks you must code in your programming language of choice. Let's look at a slightly more difficult algorithm. Previously, we analyzed the process of logging into Facebook and wrote some pseudocode on how this is achieved. I have now added an extra step to consider if the user has put in the correct user ID and password. Our first line requires the user to type www.facebook.com. This is an input-output process. The user arrives at the Facebook page. This is a process. The user is then prompted to enter their user ID and password. This is an input-output process. Facebook then needs to determine if the username and password is correct. This is a decision. Depending on the decision, there will be two different outcomes. If the password is wrong, a login error will occur and the user will receive an error message. This is an input output process. If the password is correct and the information contained within the user's Facebook account will be displayed. This is an input output process. The algorithm is now complete. To visualize this, we can now convert our pseudocode into a flowchart. Each line of our pseudocode is translated into the correct flowchart symbol. Input output processes are shown as parallelograms, Processes are shown as rectangles and a diamond is used for making a decision. Arrow connectors are used to show the flow from the start to the end of the algorithm. As a programmer, you now have a very clear understanding of the structure of the program and the task you must code in your programming language of choice. You can also use the flowchart to help improve your algorithm. By following the flowchart, I can see that my algorithm is not doing what I intended. That is, there is a possibility that I can't get into Facebook if the ID and password is wrong. At the moment, if the ID and password is wrong, we can see that the program simply ends. Is this what we want? We still want to get into our Facebook account. All we need to do is modify our flowchart so that we can return to the login page and try again. Visually, and before we get bogged down in lots of programming code, we were able to fix the structure of our algorithm. Visually we can see that this new algorithm is better suited to the task and we can now go about converting this structure into our programming language. Well, that is the very basics of writing an algorithm in both pseudocode and flowchart format. Try doing some simple algorithms yourself and then you can move on to some more advanced features.